Hello again, everyone. You know, I love Vim. It's my favorite text editor in Linux in general. And I love it so much, in fact, that even when I am using a desktop Linux OS like Ubuntu or Pop OS, I often use Vim as my text editor of choice for going the GUI text editors that come with the distribution. Vim is a very powerful text editor. And in this video, we're going to explore some ways in which we can customize it. So let's get started. So let's get started with customizing Vim. Now, first of all, you have to have Vim installed, otherwise you can't use it if it's not present. And in my case, it's already installed on this image. I didn't install it myself, it was already included. Depending on your image, you might have to install the Vim package. And that differs based on the distribution that you're running. But if you run the which Vim command, like I did here, and you do see output, then you should be good to go. Now when you open Vim, you get this default screen right here. And if you press I for insert, that puts you in insert mode and then you are allowed to type. And when you're done, you can hit escape. You can type colon to go into command mode. W is right to save your changes. I'm not actually going to do that because I'm not even editing a file right now. But I could also type Q for quit to quit out of the editor. But the thing is, this is not a Vim tutorial. I'm sure you're able to use Vim already if you are looking for Vim customization tips. And why do we customize Vim? Well, if you look at this window, it's a little basic. There's pretty much nothing going on here. Now, as a better example, if I open an existing file, here's the SSH configuration file for the SSH server. This is a very common file to edit to increase the security of your Linode. We have the file right here and you know, it's fine. Vim is very useful. We could scroll through, we can make our changes, but again, it's very basic. I don't even have line numbers here by default. So if someone wanted me to edit a specific line in a file, yes, I could go exactly to that line. Vim does allow you to do that, but it would be even better if I could see line numbers. And I could add that by pressing colon, just like that, and then set, and then number. And just like that, we have line numbers. And that's pretty cool. But the problem is, if I quit out, and then I go back in, that customization is lost. Now I could easily get that back by running that command right there again, colon, set, space, number. And now I have line numbers again, but it would be nice if I could set some default customizations to always apply automatically every time I open Vim and then get this editor set up exactly the way I like it. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. Now inside your home directory, and yes, I know I'm logged in as root, but the user doesn't really matter because Vim looks for a configuration file in your home directory, regardless of which user you are logged in as. And if it finds that file, and assuming that file contains valid configuration, it'll actually load those tweaks into memory and automatically apply them every time you open the editor. So let's create that config file and get started with customizing Vim. And ironically enough, I'm going to use Vim to create its config file. A bit of a chicken and egg analogy would work really well here. So I'll type Vim and then tilde, shorthand for my home directory, and inside my home directory, I want to create a file that is named .vimrc, just like this. And the file doesn't actually exist yet, but again, if I create it and it contains valid configuration options, then the options will be loaded into memory every time I open Vim. So the first tweak that I'm going to give you is I am going to show you how to always have line numbers enabled. So I will enter insert mode by pressing I, and that's the last time I'll mention it. I'm sure you probably already know how to get into insert mode by now. And I'm adding a comment here. Comments begin with a single double quote, like you see here. And then on the next line, I'm going to type set and then number. I'll escape out and save it with colon WQ. Now, if I was to open up that SSH config file again, You can see now that I have line numbers and I didn't even have to manually enable that. It was already done for me. 
But what else can we tweak? Let's see some additional examples. Now another thing that we can enable is a status bar on the bottom of the screen. In command mode, I can turn that on by typing colon set. Last status, set that equal to two. I'll press enter. And now we have a bar at the bottom of the screen. And you know what? I like that. So here at the end, I'll add another comment. And I will add that tweak right there to make sure that that is loaded every time I open Vim. Now, another tweak that we might want to add here is to change the compatibility mode to Vim only. And this is going to ensure that we are setting the compatibility mode to Vim only, which means not VI. Vim is essentially the enhanced version of VI. So we are going to specifically limit this to Vim only. And again, this is optional. All of these tweaks are optional. It's just an example. Another thing that we can do is enable wrapping when a long line of text goes to the end of the file. And these are in no particular order, by the way. So that's going to enable wrapping. We can also force the encoding to a particular type. So as you can see, I've added quite a few options here. And what I'm going to do is bring up the SSH config file again. And you might be wondering why is he continually using the SSH config file as an example? Well, actually, it's a hint. You should make sure that SSH is secured on your Linode. So if you haven't edited this file, you definitely should have. Anyway, we didn't get any errors here, so that's important. Everything should be working. I've added some options here, and the tweaks that I've added to the config file will change the way that Vim behaves. There's some more examples in the document that matches this article if you want to check that out. There's all kinds of different tweaks that you can actually implement into Vim. And there's definitely some clever ones out there. Now next, what I'm going to show you how to do is actually download plugins for Vim. And yes, Vim supports plugins. But first, we're going to need access to the curl command. And I already have it, so I'm good to go. If you don't have it on your end, you might have to install the package. I'll leave that up to you. And now what I'm going to do is set this up, just get this ready to make sure that plugins are a possibility. And there's multiple different methods you can use to install plugins. This is one of several. So I'm creating a .vimrc.plug file in my home directory here. It's empty. I just use the touch command to make sure that it exists. It's currently zero bytes, but that's okay. And I'll create a new directory. I'll use dash p because I want to also create the parent directory. So I will create a .vim directory and inside there a plug directory. And now I'm going to open up the vimrc file yet again. And at the end, I'll type yet another comment. So this is pretty interesting. In the previous examples, I just added one-liners to customize Vim, but right here, I'm actually including an if statement, something that you would be more likely to see in an actual programming language, but this config file actually supports if statements. And what it's doing is it's checking to see if that file that I've created actually exists or not, and if it does, it's going to source it, basically load it into memory. So I'll save this. And I'll open up the file that we've just created, the empty one that I created with the touch command. 
So I'll type call and then space plug. And I'm going to add a plugin right here. And the plugin that I'm going to install is Fugitive, which is a GitHub wrapper. And then I'll add that line right there, which actually closes out the file. And if you want to add any additional plugins, then what you could do is add them right here in between this plugin that I've already added and the plug end there at the end. You want to make sure that the line that is currently line number six is the last thing in the file. Anyway, I'll save the file. And now to actually install plugins with vimplug, I need to install vimplug itself. And I'm going to do so with the command that I'm about to type. I'll just paste it in and then I'll explain what it's doing. So this command right here should create the directories that are required and also install vimplug from GitHub. I'll press enter and we should be all set and ready to go. So I will open up vim and now it's warning me that I don't have git installed. So what I'm going to do is abort the process and I will run apt install git. So you might need to install this package on your end as well. Let's try that again. I'll open up Vim. And this time Vim opened up with no errors, so that's a good sign. And now what I'm going to do in command mode is type plug install. And what that should do is install every plugin that I have listed in the plugin file. We only have one there right now, but I'm sure if you search around, you'll probably find some other plugins that might help you customize Vim the way you like it. So I'll press enter. And it looks like it's done. It installed that one plugin, but again, that one plugin is the only one that I had in that file. So we were successful. Now from here, I recommend that you play around with Vim. Check out some other customization tweaks online, including the article that's attached to this video. You can also check out the Vim Awesome website as well because there's quite a few awesome plugins right there on that website. Vim is a very powerful text editor to the point where you could be using it for years and still learn new things because there's just so many features and then you can extend it with plugins and you saw some examples in this video of some customizations and tweaks which also extend it. I hope it was helpful. Make sure you click that like button if you like this video. That lets YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this. And subscribe if you haven't already done so, because we're going to be back with new content very soon. Thanks for watching.